the assessment of NATO's own internal calculations reveals a stark shortfall in Europe's air defense capabilities, especially in protecting its eastern flank. This issue has become particularly pressing in light of Russia's extensive use of missiles, drones and glide bombs in its ongoing conflict with Ukraine. The heavy reliance on such weaponry by Russia has significantly highlighted the necessity for robust air defenses as Ukraine continually pleads with the West for more systems and rockets to safeguard its cities, military personnel, and energy infrastructure from relentless bombing. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they're uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. Individuals familiar with classified defense strategies formulated last year disclosed that NATO states currently possess less than 5% of the air defense resources required to adequately defend Central and Eastern Europe against a comprehensive assault. A senior NATO diplomat emphasized that missile and airstrike defenses are crucial for the strategic plan to protect Eastern Europe from potential invasions, acknowledging that, at present, the alliance does not possess the necessary capabilities. NATO foreign ministers are scheduled to convene in Prague for two days of discussions aimed at preparing for an upcoming summit in Washington this July. Strengthening European defense will be a primary focus of this meeting. Some European leaders and military experts have suggested that Russia might have the capability to launch an attack on a NATO member state by the decade's end. In its extensive defense review last year, the UK government identified the protection against aerial attacks as its most pressing challenge in over three decades. The urgency to bolster air defense has been magnified by Russia's deployment of missiles, drones and powerful Soviet-era glide bombs in Ukraine. This situation has pressured NATO members to increase defense spending following years of military budget reductions. A second NATO diplomat pointed out that air defense is one of the alliance's most significant vulnerabilities, a fact that cannot be overlooked. The limited provision of additional air defense equipment to Ukraine by European NATO states in recent months has underscored the continent's inadequate supplies of these costly and time-consuming to produce systems. This shortage has prompted various overlapping initiatives aimed at developing long-term solutions. Last year, Germany introduced the SkyShield initiative involving more than a dozen EU countries to create a shared air defense system utilizing technology from the US and Israel. However, France publicly criticized this proposal and suggested an alternative supported by fewer allies. Recently, Poland and Greece appealed to the European Commission to assist in developing and possibly financing a pan-European air defense system. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has expressed her support for this proposal. Some EU capitals have even proposed raising common debt to fund defense projects. In a letter to von der Leyen, Greek and Polish Prime Ministers Kyriakos Mitsotakis and Donald Tusk described air defense as a critical vulnerability in European security, noting that the conflict in Ukraine has provided lessons that can no longer be ignored. The widespread availability of inexpensive, long-range attack drones, as employed by Russia against Ukraine, has further exacerbated these concerns. A Western defense official remarked that long-range strike capabilities are no longer exclusive to superpowers. A NATO official confirmed that while specific capability targets and defense plans are classified, air and missile defenses remain top priorities, although stockpiles have diminished. The official added that NATO's new defense strategy significantly increased the requirements for air and missile defense in both quantity and readiness, with member countries investing in new capabilities, including fighter jets. Despite these challenges, the official expressed confidence in NATO's deterrence strength against Russia. Following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the U.S. deployed a Patriot battery air defense system to secure an airport in southern Poland, which has become a critical hub for transporting Western weapons to Kiev. However, officials indicate that NATO members have such limited supplies of these systems that their ability to deploy them beyond their own territories is extremely restricted. In the UK, the Royal Navy's six Type 45 destroyers are equipped with ballistic missile defense systems, but these vessels have been plagued by design issues. The British Army also possesses six state-of-the-art Sky Saber ground-based air defense systems, but their interceptors have a limited range of approximately 40 kilometers, with two of the systems currently stationed overseas. Jack Waddling, a senior research fellow at the Royal United Services Institute in London, criticized the UK's air defense capability as entirely inadequate. A potential solution to this shortfall could involve the full integration of Europe's various air defense systems, which would create a dense network of sensors and interceptors across the continent. However, efforts to modernize NATO's command and control infrastructure for air defense have historically failed to gain momentum. 
This lack of progress underscores the challenges NATO faces in addressing the critical gaps in its air defense strategy, especially given the current geopolitical tensions and the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.